some weird facts and fun historic facts about the solar eclipse and its connection to 1812 Tecumseh, the Native American chief, ancient Egyptians, the New Madrid fault line, Cairo, Illinois, Cahokia, but I wanna ask you, does history repeat itself? And what do you think all of these coincidences and these weird historic events and these interesting facts, do they apply now? I'm gonna break it down for you, historic fact by historic fact. So I'm going to share some weird and, I mean, I think they're fun history facts regarding the solar eclipse. I'm not going to say that all of this means that all this stuff is going to happen. I'm going to leave that to you. I just want to give you information historically as to what has happened during this previous solar eclipse that was a big one in 1811 and tell you about all of the things that happened in that area in Illinois because this solar eclipse is happening over the same area where all of this dramatic historic events happened that helped to create victory for our country. Should we be looking at historic context in order to figure out what's going on now, especially when we have natural occurrences happening like earthquakes, solar eclipses. The first thing I want to discuss and give you context for is to talk about the solar eclipse in 1811, Tecumseh, the Tecumseh Comet and the Battle of Tippecanoe. I know, it makes me sound like a total nerd. Try to tie it together in a little bow with a timeline. I think you're gonna find it really interesting, so please stay to the end. Tecumseh was a very powerful Native American Shawnee warrior. He brought together all of these tribes. He was born in Ohio in the late 1700s. He was one of many children and his dad ended up dying in a battle. What he was doing was bringing together all of these Native American tribes together to be able to fight against the US Army because he believed that the land should be theirs and they shouldn't be pushed out of their land. He had a brother whose name was Tenskawatawa. He was his younger brother, he wasn't a great soldier or warrior, but he was a prophet. He he sort of had these gifts. He learned how to be a medicine man and he was a prophet. All of this was happening in the area of Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, all, all around there, mainly in Indiana in a, in a town that they then had named Prophet's Town. Let's go back to 17 months prior to the 1811 solar eclipse. Tecumseh was born, like I said, in the late 1700s. His name actually means shooting star or he who walks the sky. And it's a pretty cool name. 17 months before the solar eclipse in 1811 in that area. Now remember, this solar eclipse is kind of intersecting from the 2017 eclipse, I believe near Carbondale, Cahokia, Cairo, Illinois, St. Louis, for 17 months, there was a comet that orbited the Earth that some called Napoleon's Comet, but many called it Tecumseh's Comet. Remember, his name is Shooting Star. It has an orbit of every 3,065 years, which means that there's this Egyptian connection because it hadn't orbited the Earth since the time of Ramses, 3,000 years prior. First, let's say 17 months before September of 1811, there is this comet, this very rare comet circling and being seen quite clearly in the area where all of this is going on. And by the way, when I say all of this and the space where this was, this area in Illinois and Indiana was pretty far west. It wasn't the all the way west, but you know, our Americans, William Henry Harrison, who was the governor of Indiana area at that point, wanted to be able to claim all of the land. And of course, even prior to that, when Thomas Jefferson was president, he was trying to get the Native Americans to calm down, become similar to the Europeans, and we'll let you have the land. Well, Tecumseh and his people were like, this is crazy, this is our land, no. But William Henry Harrison was, 
talking to Thomas Jefferson prior to that, and they were all trying to work this thing out. Well, Tecumseh's like, no, instead, I want to create my own nation and keep my own nation because we have our own nation. So now all of the Native tribes are getting together to form this Native American Confederacy. So they had their own army. The comet's going around, and then Tenatskawawa is being challenged by William Henry Harrison, who basically says to him, hey, if you're so, all that, if you're so great, show me a sign that you know what the heck you're talking about because otherwise you're just a fraud. Then the solar eclipse comes in now September of 1811. And that kind of freaks them out. And William Henry Harrison is like, oh my gosh, these people actually do have power. Well, they knew the stars. They could read the stars. They were Native Americans. They knew how to kind of check out nature and were really great in that way. And where Tenatskawawa was not really the greatest warrior, he was really good at being able to prophesy and like talk about things like that. So anyhow, so that was September of 1811 was like William Henry Harrison saying, oh my gosh, these guys may have real power. We better take them down. Tecumseh and Tenatskawawa and all of these tribes have this area in Indiana called Prophet's Town. And it's an area where they're living and they're living peacefully in general. It's now November. Tecumseh has to leave and go somewhere else and fight. And so he takes off. Meanwhile, William Henry Harrison is like, this is a great time for us to kind of come and attack and we'll attack and we'll take them out. Now this is in November. So remember there's a comet first, then September, there is the eclipse. Now it's November. What happens then? Tecumseh's gone. William Henry Harrison is about to attack, but instead his brother, even though Tecumseh is like Tenatskawawa, do not go over there. Please do not fight them. He decides to do this surprise attack against William Henry Harrison and the U.S. Army. So he takes on the U.S. Army. He loses. Instead, Gov Governor Harrison then attacks on November. So now it's November 1811, and he burns down Prophetstown. So Prophetstown now is gone. Tenatskawawa is like See you later. I'm out of here. He leaves like goes to Canada or something. He's no longer in the picture for a while. Tecumseh's like, oh my gosh, this is it's crazy. Okay, so that's November. At that point, they're, they're giving like curses and all this thing against America. Basically, there's this Tecumseh curse that says that every, any year divisible by I think 20, meaning anything like with a zero that they're elected in, they will die. And there were many presidents that died from this supposed curse. Now we're in November. Around the same time, there was a guy named Henry Brackenridge who may seemingly seem unrelated to this, but he decides to put his feet and his hands into this. He's discovering this whole Louisiana territory, which includes this area, right? So he's in Cahokia. Cahokia is around the Mississippi River because that's also where Cairo is. And he discovers these Cahokian mounds. They were clearly discovered before. There were actually monks living there at one point, but these mounds go back into ancient Egyptian times. Like everybody was always wondering, why do they call it Cairo, Illinois or Cairo, Illinois? Carbondale has that name and now we've got Cahokia. It's like, what is that all about? This guy Brackenridge also in that area of like November-ish, October, November-ish, he's there. I'm not saying that he's defying this kind of religious site, but he's just checking it all out on these ancient Egyptian lands and he's saying whoa America must be a lot older than we thought and there must have been some kind of he says Mexican civilization living here but there's also these Egyptian artifacts this is confusing and so he basically comes across Cahokia around the same time remember Tenatskawawa is throwing curses on the US and America and the presidents and there's still this battle in the area and Tecumseh partners with the British at that point because he's like, look, we want our land, but the British are at least saying you can keep your land, fight with us, where the Americans are like, no, we're taking everything. At least the, the British are saying 
that they'll have contracts or something. But so now fast forward to December. Okay, in the same area, intersecting with four different states. I'm doing all this at the top of my head, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not really reading anything. So if I get it wrong, just forgive me. I'm trying to give you information that you can search out yourself and check out yourself, but I find it all fascinating. There is this fault line. You think of California as having earthquakes. You think now we have a New York earthquake right around the time of the eclipse. There's a huge fault line in the Midwest called the New Madrid Fault Line or the New Madrid Seismic Zone. And it's located in an area near Cairo, Illinois. It's New Madrid, it's called New Madrid. And it's a serious fault line which kind of intersects with Indiana, Kentucky, little part of Illinois. So there's like four or five different states that are like right there. And remember, the Mississippi River comes down as well. Now we have the comet that year going woo woo woo. Hasn't been seen since Egyptian times. Interesting that there's these Egyptian mounds in Cahokia that they think are Egyptian mounds. It could be similar to Mayan mounds. All we know is that there are pyramids, pyramids in that area. And I will add that there are people out there who swear that they have found Egyptian artifacts and there's one theory that Cleopatra and Mark Anthony's son, what was his name, Helios, something, Alexander Helios, I have to figure out his name. See, I'm doing this at the top of my head. Anyhow, that, that they all came into America and some are saying it's like inter-earth or I don't know, there was some fast track into the area and they had been there for ages. So some people are surmising that these truly are Egyptian mounds. Others are saying that the Native Americans actually have part of, again, I'm throwing just all these, whoo, these things out there, that they actually have Jewish blood and ancestry and could be part of the lost tribes. Just throwing that out. Also heard, by the way, that the Vikings, the Chinese, every, everybody's like discovered America before Americans discovered it. But now he's discovering Cahokia, but now it's December of 1811. And there is a massive earthquake, massive, with this New Madrid fault line. The things that happen during this earthquake, there are, the Mississippi floats backwards for quite a while, just kind of goes back and then comes back out. There are like geysers, there are fireballs floating, like flying in the air, trees just falling down like, dominoes, sand boils, meaning that there's like sand, like almost like geysers coming up. There's all of these bizarre lights, a smell, earthquake smog, loud thunderous things, lights in the sky, animals be like, it's running and freaking out. It's a terrifying scene of nature. It's just massive. The whole topography changes. This goes on they don't know which level it was like a, they said maybe a 7.6 so there's this fault line that still exists there that has not been super active since 1811 they haven't had like a major earthquake and some people say that the activity is kind of slowing down others are saying that it's speeding up and it's and the likelihood of another earthquake could be huge there are those earthquakes fast forward after the earthquakes, now we have the War of 1812. And now Tecumseh and his uh, Native American Confederacy, now it's like 1812, whatever, 1813. He goes all the way up to, with, his, with the British to fight the Americans in Moravia Town, Ontario. And he is killed in that battle. He's killed, but prior to being killed, a lot of the British just, whoop, they leave. He's left there with his tribes of soldiers to fight off major, like this major resistance, and he then dies. And then fast forward a little bit after that, and guess what happens? The White House, the Library of Congress, many of the buildings in DC now are burnt down by the British. Not because of Tecumseh dying, but because of battle. And it's ironic that Prophetstown which was named after Tanatskawawa, the brother of Tecumseh, who was named Shooting Star, or he who walks in the sky, something like that. They, you know, throw out a curse, they try to fight, and then this is now what's happening. Eventually, as we know, America wins, and we have all of that land. But 
fast forward and now there is this event happening on April 8th over this territory that has this history with 1812, a lot of similarities, earthquakes, shooting stars, solar eclipses, turmoil. Tecumseh lost his entire nation and he died. He was fighting to keep his rightful nation and he died and he was killed and he lost that. There seems to be a battle for the nation now. So let's see what that, what does that mean? Other little pieces of information before I kind of wrap it all up and sign off is that this whole thing regarding Cairo, Carbondale, Cahokia, Egyptian <laughs> artifacts and pyramids, it's so wild. The Native Americans losing the country and then these crazy curses. It's just fascinating. There's even more, there's more and more and more, but it's just, I'm just telling you this honestly, not to scare anybody about anything because my expectation honestly is just that we have, everybody goes and they look and they see Possibly there's going to be like a crazy year, a few years that we have. It is election year as well. I do find it interesting the coincidental things that are happening. And I haven't touched upon, and I'm not going into like prophetic words, what the Bible said, what, you know, but there's all kinds of things. I think personally for myself, I'm, my expectations are wow, what an interesting time that these similarities are happening. I'm going to take a peek at it and then just watch how things evolve. I will say that after that time, things were very dramatic. William Henry Harrison, who was fighting to Natsukawa, eventually became president in like 1840 or something like that. Seems like such a long time after that. But he only lasted one month because he died. Then there was similar to what this Tecumseh curse, many presidents that were elected on the zero zero zeros ended up dying all the way up to Kennedy not every single time but that was very fascinating and I'm just going to say does his ask you the question does history repeat itself I'm going to go down the timeline again okay so we have a rare comet that was only seen during the time of Ramses some people say that there's a comet going around now but this was a different comet. This was a massively more powerful comet even than the one we're talking about because it was so historic. So we have the comet going 17 months prior and all the way up to September. I think it was September 17th. I could be wrong, excuse me, of 1811 when there was a full eclipse where William Henry Harrison is like, whoa, did Tanatskawawa predict this? Okay, then we have the whole burning down of Prophetstown by the American soldiers at William Henry Harrison's request. Simultaneously, there is a man called Henry Brackenridge who is finding his way into even more massive discoveries regarding Cahokia pyramid mounds and te ancient temples and yada, yada, yada. Just checking that out on the Mississippi by the Mississippi, and then we have the earthquakes, 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 the Mississippi going backwards at that point, and then we have um, months, like three or four months of this, then we have the War of 1812, Tecumseh dies, and then we have the White House being burned down. It was burned. Yeah, it was burned. And then the next day, there was a massive tornado and all of the severe weather that pushed. So the severe weather pushed the British out because they wanted to come in and take over. But the weather scared them and took them out And because the weather lasted for two hours. It was hail. It was raining. The rain that came with the tornado and the storm actually helped to take out the fire with the White House. What does it mean? I don't know. I'm just giving you the information. <laughs> so I am Deanna from Hot for History. I'm fascinated by this. I am still going in, in here like, whoa, like I'm checking things out. Feels like history is repeating itself. 
And if that's the case, then we better buckle up for some exciting times. But what I know is that God is good above all of this and that I believe that there are good things ahead. I'm an eternal optimist. So anyhow, subscribe to Hot for History. I like to share some historic facts that I bet your history teacher would never dare to teach you.